Good morning, everybody. It's March 17th. It's Thursday. It's 2022. I don't know why I said it in that order. It's Thursday, March 17th, 2022. We're about to go back up to Norway House, Manitoba. It's about a 10 hour drive from where I am now. We're going to bobtail up there. We're going to pick up another one of those office trailers. We're going to bring that one down to Selkirk. It's almost exactly the same thing we did yesterday, except that one we brought to Stonewall. Selkirk's a little further east down the road. Pretty much the same thing though. 10 hours up there, we're gonna sleep there tonight, 10 hours back down, and we'll be back tomorrow, Friday evening. It'll work out perfect. Stop by the Timmy's here in, uh, at Deacon's Corner. Look at all this. This is what happens when all the snow melts, eh? I don't know what that loader guy's doing, if he's moving the water or if he's moving the snow. I think he's trying to move the water. <laughs> oh boy, I don't want to get stuck here. Oh, oh man. No, I'm not going in here. Oh, look at this. What a mess. No, I'm not going in there. Are you crazy? I'm bobtailing. I'm going to get stuck in that stuff. See, we're not sinking in here, so this, this part here is tough. Words. Harder. Just like where that guy is there too. He's safe there. But this is all packed snow, right? And then at this time of year, in the springtime, when it starts melting, it gets all soft and it turns into this mess here. And this is a uh, a highway tractor's worst nightmare. As you can see, people got stuck here already. And it'll just suck you right in, and you're not going anywhere. It's going to hold on to you real tight. So these are the kind of things you learn in your first couple of years of trucking and uh, how, how different seasons uh, produce different challenges in different climates and different regions. Yeah, I think we can make it through that, that doesn't look too soft. We'll just come roaring through here and just plow right through. Oh, this gas station's almost ready here. It's gonna be an Esso. Yeah. Esso and Timmy's. It used to be Timmy's and Wendy's always. Now it's always Timmy's and Esso. So the reason I uh, pointed out the fact that I was bobtailing before when I decided not to go through that was because you have less traction when you're bobtailing because there's no weight on your drive tires, right? You'll just sit there and spin. However, you see some of these guys decided to plow through there anyways. If I was fully loaded and at a gross weight of like 80,000, 90,000 pounds, I would definitely have gone through there too. Wouldn't have had a problem. You go through there like a tank then when you're fully loaded. But when you're empty, even if you have an empty trailer behind you or especially if you're bobtailing, that's like a, that's like a quicksand trip. Tri what trap, quicksand trap. You'll sink right in and you'll be stuck. However, if you're fully loaded, use your personal judgment. I mean, I would go through that fully loaded but you still run the risk of getting stuck. So if you don't want to run run the risk, just go where you're not going to get stuck. Just if you're fully loaded, you could probably, because you're, you're pushing tracks through this way, and if you suddenly get stuck and can't go forward, well, you can just back up in the tracks you just made, right? And then take another running start at it. Probably won't get stuck. Like this guy here, look at him. He's gonna plow right through. Give her, bud. Well, he's gonna go for the path of least resistance there, but... You see, he's probably got a lot of weight in that trailer. Even if it's an empty trailer, it's more than I have. But, so those are the kind of things you learn over the first few years of driving, right? And that's why it's sometimes kind of hard to get on at a company without that experience because the first two years you learn so much. But then the question comes up, like, where do I gain my experience if everybody requires experience? Usually, like in any career, you gotta sort of start on something a little bit uh, closer to home, a little bit smaller, maybe driving some dump trucks, gravel trucks. Uh, for me personally, I went and delivered Pepsi for five years. Uh, Pepsi in Winnipeg is always looking, well, I shouldn't say now, it's been 10 years since I've been there, but they were really desperate for drivers and they hired me right out of the gate. I was 18, I didn't even have my commercial license when they hired me for the job. They helped me get my license and trained me and stuff. I got my license and then boom, I was out on my own the next day. <laughs> they really needed drivers. And uh, I got my experience that way. 
right? Uh, another way you can gain experience is some of the mega carriers, they have these training programs set up already. Uh, it's a very expensive, big program that some of the big companies do have. Uh, I'm not familiar with them because I've never gone through them, but I know that they, they'll train you and hire you if you sign a contract to work with them for an X amount of time, like a year or two after your training is complete, right? That'll train, that'll pay back your training. Sometimes they'll even train you for free if you agree to work for a year or two at a reduced rate to pay back the training, right? I'm not familiar with those. I'm sorry, I can't help you with those. I can help you get work here. If you're eligible to work with us here and you do have the experience already, we do we do ask that. Uh, we haul a lot of specialized freight here. So we need uh, like, uh, drivers who are passionate about driving, who love to drive, know what they're doing, and can get our freight from point A to point B safely and in one piece without wrecking it, right? So we are looking for drivers. And even if you think you may not be eligible, but you want to apply anyways, you can always send me an email. My email address is always down below in the description, truckerjosh at keystonewestern.com. There's a link down below in the description to make it super easy for you. If you're thinking that you want to work here with us, even if you're wondering, maybe I'm not eligible, but I should try anyways, send me a message anyways and we can chat. Maybe we can work something out, you know? Maybe, maybe we can figure it out together. Maybe you don't have quite the experience that we require, but... Eh, maybe we can work something out where you can uh, we can figure it out and get you in a truck, right? Because we're, we're looking for drivers too and uh, we're willing to uh, to work with you so that we can get our freight moving and get you working. Buckle myself in so I don't fall out. Start her up so we can move forward. Put her in gear. All right. Put the lights on. We're ready to rock. We have 825 kilometers to go. That's 500 miles, approximately. And we want to do that tonight. Let's give her. Oh, oh, am I stuck? Nope. Nope. Okay, let's give her. No stopping, no stopping. Yeah, we can't go too fast. Or we're gonna go flying out the window over all these bumps. Yikes. Okay, keep moving, just keep moving, just keep moving. Keep moving, I don't even have to lock up the diffs or anything here. Okay, this is a little bit of a soft part here. We should be fine. There's a tow truck right there if I need him. <laughs> okay, okay. And didn't even have to lock anything up. Beautiful. We've got our Tims. It's always a little bit of a rough ride bobtailing, so it's gonna be a bit of a rough ride up north, but once we hook onto a trailer, it'll be a smooth ride back south. We get to go over that ice road again. That's pretty cool. Told my wife last night that I went over the ice. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> oh well. It's only half a kilometer, and the ice is probably like eight feet thick. What do I know? These guys are bobtailing too. Maybe I should go that way. You know what? I'm gonna go that way. I'm gonna go that way. I changed my mind. Changed my mind. Going this way. Because this way leads up to the road we call Dugald, and Dugald will take me to the perimeter. The road that I wanna go to. We're gonna go around the north side of Winnipeg and shoot up like an arrow up, up, up Highway 6. The one highway leading up into northern Manitoba. And it's pretty warm down here right now. It's plus three degrees Celsius. Uh, yesterday when I was in Norway house, it was minus 22 up there. So it's quite a bit colder there, which is good because I don't want that ice road to melt out. Uh, I don't want to fall through. I know the camera has got a steady camera option on it. So you, you really aren't seeing how bumpy this road is right now. As I'm bobtailing up the six, I'm between, what is that, Grand Rapids? And uh, where the six turns east on the way to Thompson. Holy smokes. I forgot already, it's only been one day since I've been up here, but yeah, we gotta tighten all the bolts when we get there. Uh, yikes. Look at this thing, look at everything shake. 
how bad the road is here. That is nuts. And this is the better part of it. It was worse over there. I pulled over because it was so bumpy. I had to give my head a break. It's getting a headache. We're coming up to the generating station at Genpeg. I think there's a bunch of parking right here. Or in there too. Could always park in and around here if I have to later, but I'm pretty sure I'll have a few hours to keep going yet. It's a narrow bridge. It'd be interesting taking oversized loads through here. <laughs> I'd love to go inside these hydro dams and actually see how they work. I think that'd be a really neat field trip. Do any of you work in one of these somewhere? If not here in Manitoba, maybe somewhere else. Must be a pretty neat job. there's not more cabins or something up here because all the lakes like this down in the southern part of the province in the southeast every lake like this has multi-million dollar cabins and cottages lining it <laughs> I guess up here it's uh it's untapped one day it'll be filled with all kinds of cottages one day Manitoba just doesn't have enough people yet eventually we'll all spread up here we're coming up to the ice crossing. Just about dark out here now. On our way back, it'll definitely be pitch black outside. Good thing it's not a very long crossing. Like I was saying yesterday, usually there's a cable ferry that goes back and forth. But when the water freezes, uh, we just drive over the water. You know, most countries, they, they build, uh, or most places, I should say, Canada too, most places build bridges to get over rivers and bodies of water, right? No, not here in northern Manitoba. Why well, build a bridge? You just drive right over the water. Way easier. Cheaper too. Here we go. That's where the ferry usually sits. Now we gotta go down here. This is just across, this isn't even road, this is just down the riverbanks onto the water over there. It's been a bit of a warmer day today, so we'll see how it is. Down to the water we go. It's definitely a lot wetter than it was yesterday. Yikes. Oh yeah, there's water pooled up on top of the ice here already. All right, let's give her. On to the water we go. Driving on the water. Insert Jesus joke here. Very slushy. Very slushy. Yikes. Don't want to get stuck out here. Made it. <laughs> All right. Come on, get up here. Get up here. Come on. Come on. There we go. 
If that doesn't get your heart pumping, I don't know what does. We gotta go back across that with a loaded trailer. <laughs> yeah, in the dark. There's my trailer right there. Exactly like the one I picked up before. It's a regular 53 foot uh, reefer trailer by the looks of it. The reefer engine's been taken off on the front, the refrigeration engine, and uh, it's just been converted. I, I really want to get back over the ice as quickly as possible. That was only my second time coming up here. I guess my third time going over the ice and going back will be my fourth time, but the second time loaded. And it's been a really warm day. As you saw, a lot of water and slush had pooled up on top of the ice already. That's normal from what I've heard, but it still makes me a little nervous because I'm not used to that. I don't do that that often. But I just want to get back over that ice as fast as possible. <laughs> just so that I can just be back on the mainland, I guess. Because this is technically an island that I'm on right now. And there's no bridge. I mean, there's got to be a time during the year where you can't leave the island, right? Because the ice is too thin to drive over, but it's still too thick for the ferry to run back and forth. So there's got to be a period of time in both spring and fall where no one can come or go. And I don't want to get caught in that time. I don't think that's till like April next month, but... Oh, I want to get out of here. I want to get back over that water. And yes, if you haven't noticed, the roads were so rough on the way up here that these brackets actually broke right off the frame. That's a steel bracket in there. And this bracket here, the fender like that, that's usually over here, broke right off. I'm lucky it didn't actually fall off. I pulled over and it was sort of just hanging off a thread here and laying on the tire and uh I figured well that's not good so I literally just picked it up and the rest of it broke off of here and i had to strap it onto the back there we'll get it fixed when we get back to the shop but that's what i mean i'm not kidding you the roads are terrible coming up here i need to do something about that the truck is falling apart we need some smoother roads but we made it we made it in one piece the whole piece is still here. We didn't lose anything. It's right there. Crazy, eh? It's, it's always something. It's always something. Just pulled it out just from beside the building there so that I could do a proper walk around. Also made sure it was hooked on properly. And I gotta go grab these uh, landing gear pads. 
Check the tires. Tires are all turning on this side so the brakes aren't frozen. That's awesome. Lights are working back here. Fantastic. Everything's locked up. Fantastic. All right. Double check these. You can tell that neither tire was sliding because the tracks in the snow. So once again, you can tell that it's good by the way that it is. Doors are closed and locked. Uh-huh. Locked. Uh-huh. Okay, so now I've got to uh, find a place where I can tie down those uh, dolly pads. I think I might just put them in here. Uh -huh. If there's room in here, we'll see if I can do that. And then uh, we'll be on our way. Like I said, got to get over that ice. Sooner the better. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, yeah, there's one there, one here. I was hoping that, because uh, they were frozen into the ground, right? I was kind of hoping that driving over them would loosen them up. They're still frozen to the ground, so we got to go get our trusty fix-it tool. You know which tool I'm talking about. The trusty crowbar. It fixes everything. You can pry stuff with it, you can whack stuff with it, you can poke stuff with it. Ha <laughs> ha! I can't lose. Okay, I'm gonna put you right here, I guess. You can see the dolly pad down there, right? I'm gonna need both hands for this, I think. All right, now, should I pry it or should I whack it? Okay. Oh, there we go. See? Told you. You need these dolly pads to rest the trailer on. Otherwise, it's getting warmer outside and as the ground thaws, trailer legs would sink right into the ground if you don't put it on these. I put them under there. That way I have them with me. Very important because if this trailer sinks in in the front there that's uh, a big mess to clean up and nobody's going to be very happy with me. And I like keeping people happy. I'm a people pleaser. Especially when I'm working. I have this thing about pleasing customers. I like them to be happy so that they call back. All right. Here we go. To the ice road. All my stuff is just all over the truck. I had this all organized before and I've already cleaned up a lot of it. But these roads just were absolutely nuts. I'm gonna have to do some cleanup later now. Just nuts. Yikes, so much stuff. This is under here too. Man, and what are my clothes doing up here? Those were all the way back there on the bed. They made it all the way up here under the dash. It's just a rodeo. Ah, it's winter roads for you. Okay, we're coming up to the ice crossing. I saw a produce truck going the other way, so he came across here fully loaded, so that made me feel a little more comfortable. There's a car in front of us here. It's gonna cross in front of us. I don't know if you see him way down there. Google's my GPS down here is still telling me to take the ferry. <laughs> Can't do that this time of year, Google. Okay, now there's a sign off to the right here that should say that the ice crossing is still open. And the maximum weight allowed. 
It says Sea Falls Ice Crossing. It says open, max weight 39.5 tons. Uh, that would be 39,500 kilograms. So here we go, I'm gonna turn traction control off. And I'll lock up my axles a bit. Now you don't wanna go flying down onto the ice. You wanna go a steady speed, but not too fast. Let's avoid that little pool of water right there. Okay, not too fast, not too fast. Okay. We are on the water. Let's get across. I don't hear any cracking. This time of year, I'm not really expecting anything to go wrong, but since I don't do this that often, uh, it does make me a little nervous when it gets so slushy and watery like this on top of the ice. Now we wanna get onto the banks here. Okay, now we're on the land, I believe. And we want to go up the riverbank. Actually, no, this is the edge of the river yet, right? And we want to give her a little bit going up here. Give her, give her, give her, give her, give her. Come on, get up here. There we go. Look at that, another successful ice crossing. Look at us, we're a bunch of ice road truckers now, all of us. All of you watching from home, you're now an ice road trucker. Cross the ice roads together. That wasn't so bad. Thanks for hanging out with me all the way to the end. The crossing on the way back was a, well, the second crossing, like the second, this today was a little bit more uh, uh, intense for me. It's, it was only my second time ever going there and back across an ice road. And I think I explained it to you, right? There's like a few inches of just slush and water on top of the lake. Apparently that's nothing yet though, because the locals there were telling me that sometimes there's a foot of water on top of the ice. So you're, you drive out into the, the river and it's just water. You drive out, there's a foot of water on top of the ice. So you're driving through the water to the other side. You can't see the ice. It's under the water that's already melted, but it's still good. It's still good. You still go across. Ah, I'm glad I, I'm glad I wasn't there for that. That would, <laughs> I'm a Southern boy. I live in Southern Canada. I like living in the South, you know, where we don't have to drive across rivers. Why don't they have a bridge? Apparently the government's been promising the, the First Nation Reserve up there a bridge for like years and years already. And they just, haven't built it. Doesn't that just seem right in line with everything else that they've been promising, you know? Having trouble getting fresh water up to these reserves and we're having trouble building a simple bridge across a little river. It's not even that big of a river. Come on guys, build them a bridge already. That's crazy. Come on, let's, let's get a bridge built up there for Norway House. Man. Anyways, uh, that's that's just the way it is up there right now. Ferry by summer, ice road by winter, and I'm guessing there's a certain amount of time during the year where neither is working because the ice is too thin to drive on, but too thick for the boat to go across. I don't know. I don't know. Problems that a, that you know a, a just a bridge would solve. Simple solution. Yeah. Whatever. Hope to get one soon. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. It was fun crossing the ice road with you.